I'm Katie Porter, we trust. If you loved her before, wait till you hear this. Here she is talking about what we need to do to stop bank runs and shore up the banking industry. Do you think repealing the, the 2018 deregulation law will be sufficient protection against this kind of thing going forward? Or is there something else that needs to be done on top of, uh, of repealing it? Well, there are definitely other questions here, but let me be clear. I'm introducing legislation to repeal that 2018 law. It was bad then. I said it was bad then, and I was not alone. There were other folks, including Elizabeth Warren, who pushed against this. But Wall Street's lobby in Washington is simply too powerful, and they were able to get not just Republicans, but I think almost 50 Democrats between the House and the Senate to sign on to this. So I, I do think repealing the law is a good start, but I don't think it's enough. I think there are real questions about how we think about stopping runs on banks in a digital world. We sort of have analog banking law for a digital economy. And I, I think we, we saw that this sort of closed the bank on a Friday, reopened it on a Monday, which is sort of the very traditional model, simply doesn't work where people have online banking and they can, they can work over the weekend and remove money um, and organize kind of continual withdrawals throughout the weekend. So I think the Federal Reserve and FDIC need to think about how we're going to modernize to deal with this sort of digital bank run, which is really what we have here today. I'm glad you brought that up because obviously the fear is spreading. And you saw that over the weekend with First Republic stock dropping uh, so significantly, more than 60 percent. You've got other uh, banking stocks dropping as well. Uh, you need Congress in a situation like this. You need the entire government to move quickly to just kind of boost confidence and get confidence back into the system. But the question is, how does Congress or the administration uh, do something immediately to reassure people about their money in those banks? Well, I think that's part of the logic behind this announcement that all the depositors will be fully protected as we're trying to reassure people and send a signal that the U.S. government understands what's at stake here and what needs to, what what, we, what the dangers are of allowing this to continue. I, I do want to say that this gives an opportunity now for um, the FDIC to start doing more evaluations of these of these large but not ginormous. That's really what they are. They're huge but not ginormous banks, um, and to try to make sure that we don't have this same problem at other financial institutions. Look, let's be really clear. What happened here was could have been prevented by good regulation. It also could have been prevented by the executives and directors and management of Silicon Valley Bank, not forgetting the basic fundamental of finance, which is that interest rates can go in only two directions, up and down. And it's their failure to think about that because they were so focused on their bottom line that led to this run on the bank. Should this bank be allowed to fail? Well, so the Federal Reserve has already, I mean, we already answered that question, which is no. That was the decision that was rolled out on Sunday evening and this morning that we're going to um, protect depositors. Whether ultimately it all gets moved to another bank and this bank goes out of business, I, I think that's not the focus. The focus should be on how do we get here? How do we prevent the next bank from getting here? How do we build regulation to have a durable economy? So often when my colleagues vote for these kinds of deregulation bills, they explain their votes by saying they are pro-business. I want to be clear, there is nothing pro-business about a bank failure. And we have to start chipping away at this because it's not just this law and this moment with Silicon Valley Bank. It's an entire mindset about what it means to have oh, a strong economy and what those fights are and what side of those fights you should be on that I think is, is putting our whole economy at risk today and going forward.